I'm the care of a son who suffers from paranoid schizophrenia with agoraphobic tendencies. Our son, as I say, lives with us. So it, it's sort of an ongoing thing, really. Um, it's a 24 hour, seven day a week um, thing. You know, we, we're never away from it, really. When we first became involved in services, I mean, carers were, yes, well, you sit over there, we've come to see you know, your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband, whatever. And you were just ignored and, you know, person would turn up to their outpatient's appointment. What's the matter? Are you OK? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Yes, I'm fine. They've got, you know, best suit on, tugged up to death, you know. Oh, yes, I'm fine. But they never asked the carer who either was living with them all the time or saw them on a regular basis and could actually say, well, actually, <laughs> you know, is awake most of the night and sleeping during the day or he's not having as much of his meds as he should, or he's not eating, or the voices are back, or whatever it might be. Um, and slowly but surely, over time, um, services suddenly realised that carers were a valuable source of information. And I think the fact that GMW have actually got a carer's strategy says a lot um, for the organisation. Uh, we have a steering group, and then local groups have their own action, work, well, work stream groups, um, where the assistant director chairs, one of the assistant directors. So we have decision makers in the room. The local work, work stream meetings, uh, they encourage carers' attendance. So they get to know what's going on locally, not only through what they see themselves or what they read, but actually from listening to carers. And GMW, for me, works on the premise of you said we did. And that's what I like. Um, and that's why I'm proud to be connected with Greater Manchester West. Care Hub came about because GMW have been involving carers for a long time now and we recognise how valuable they are to our service and to the service users recovery. Back in 2009, uh, the Bolton part of GMW were involved in a carer demonstrator site project which was funded by the Department of Health. Lots of initiatives were put into place at that time. For example, we developed a carer's strategy and a carer's charter and we also implemented carer champions across all of the wards and all of the teams at GMW. And it sort of snowballed from there, really. We've in involved carers all the way. So everything that we do, we involve carers. We um, train all of our staff in care awareness, which carers have been involved in the design and the delivery of that training. And it was felt that we needed a dedicated care hub to pull all of those things together. And we work with not only carers, but service users, volunteers, staff and other external organisations. And it's all about gaining feedback from carers and service users to make sure that we put things into place, whether it's feedback that's positive so we can share that with staff, or if we need to make any improvements to make the service a lot better for everybody involved. Carers can get involved with the Care Hub and get involved in any activities in a variety of ways. We have a page on our website dedicated to service users and carers and it has a dedicated carers email address on there. Carers can phone myself directly, they can write in and I'm very happy to meet with carers at any time to gather feedback from them, whether that be positive or if they think there's something that we can make improvements on and I welcome any carers to get in touch with me. My role is a carer champion and what that entails is ensuring that all of the staff in our team are all aware of carers, all the families that we deal with. They've got to be forefront of their mind, the carers, so that might mean ensuring that they've got the correct information um, and identifying as well young carers within our service too. My role is I'm actually a social worker care coordinator but part of that as well is I'm the carer's champion. So within that role as carer's champion, I attend um, hopefully all the meetings that are held every two to three months. Any information that is um, sent to me via the carer lead or the carer's centre, um, I actually feed back to, our, to other colleagues. Um, so we'll have a meeting on a Wednesday and in that meeting, in the agenda, there's a part about carers and I will feedback anything that I feel is relevant, any changes that are coming about, any training that's available. Um, so it's very much that other 
um, colleagues are aware of what's going on within the caring field. It's difficult with confidentiality when you're dealing with a service user that doesn't want you to share. Um, so we will always listen um, to the carers and we'll try and, as much as possible to encourage the service user um, to al allow us to share information. And that's something we constantly revisit with, with a service user because it's really important that obviously for their care and recovery that carers are involved and actually know what's going on. Um, so it's something we're constantly revisiting to try and encourage them to, um, to let us share and get, get the carer involved as much as possible. Within the role as a care coordinator, um, it's our responsibility to offer all carers a carer's assessment. That assessment should be carried out um, annually. Um, within that, it's identifying any needs a carer might have, um, how we could support that, maybe direct them to other services that can support. Also in that as well, we have in Salford, um, there is a personal budget that can be um, applied for, which is a, a, usually around giving a carer a break and trying to get them away um, so for some relaxation. Um, so that is another role that, that is taken on by all care coordinators. The different types of support that are available to carers through the carer champion role would be that they can be signposted onto carer support workers within the service who can go and visit them at home and offer a one-to-one -one emotional support service and it's not only offered just to the husband and the wife it might be extended to all of the family because they're all suffering with the patient um, we can also signpost them onto other services around. So whether that would be young carers going to um, Bolton Lads and Girls who offer a mentoring service for our carers, or whether it would be Bolton Carers Centre who offer a one-to-one -one telephone counselling service and information and day trips and respite. And all that can be pulled together with the care coordinator to ensure that our carers are fully looked after, all their emotional needs, health and well-being, everything. Carers can become more involved with Greater Manchester West through the Carer Champion. The Carer Champion can ensure that any carers that are interested can attend meetings like the Carers Work Stream meeting, they can attend events like a recent one, the Carers Matter events where they can come and tell us how they find our services and we listen to them and take on board what they're saying and we alter our services to make sure that it suits the carers and that they are being listened to. My role is a support time recovery worker within the community mental health team in Trafford. I support service users suffering from a mental health problem on a daily basis. I support them to access um, things within the community um, and promote social inclusion. Carers are identified um, in, within our community mental health team when the cared for person comes into our team and is um, taken on and supported by a member of our staff. So the carers um, is identified by the care coordinator of the service user um, and automatically offered um, a carers assessment. Um, so this happens initially during the um, assessment process um, of the service user and then it's reviewed um, regularly during what's called a CPA review, which happens yearly. Um, and then they are referred on to what is called um, the Trafford Carers Centre, which is an outside agency, but we use um, to support carers within, within our community. Uh, the Trafford Carers Centre is an outside agency which our team utilise um, to provide a carers assessment for the carers of our service users. Um, the Trafford Carers Centre completes the assessment and then de um, decides whether any further support and help is needed for the carer. The carer doesn't have to have an assessment and they are, uh, it's an option for them um, from the carer centre. Um, the outcome of the assessment is then fed back to our community mental health team and um, so all the staff within the team are made aware of this assessment um, and the support that the carer may need in relation to caring for their, you know, their loved one. Um, the Trafford Carer Centre offers um, kind of a holistic support for the for the carer, um, practical support on a daily basis as well as kind of um, respite support. They offer holistic therapies uh, such as massages, reflexology, things like that. So there's a wide range of, of support for them from the Trafford Carer Centre. 
what prompted me to get into being a governor was the caring side. Initially to um, improve services for service users, but also so that carers could have the information that at that stage they couldn't get because of the bogey word confidentiality. Um, I'm glad to say that over the years that has become a little elastic sided and now foundation trusts and trusts are looking at it and deciding well there are certain pieces of information that we can give carers which is a great step forward since 2008 and which carers are really grateful for. Talking to other carers, um, making sure that they know the services that GMW provide, how we can help them um, and get the information out there uh, particularly when there's going to be service redesign um, or they're altering services for whatever reason but what I like about GMW is if they're going to be doing something they do actually go out and consult with people so you know just to have that feeling that people will come and talk to you and they will come back to you and say well this is how it's going I mean um, I suppose a good example is the um, community work that they're doing at the moment where people are treating more, be treated more in the community than they are in a hospital setting because service users and carers have said that's what we want to happen. So we've got extra staff, we work longer hours or the staff here work longer hours and they come back and give us updates. Services, service users and carers and we now all work together. It's not just the services in isolation, the care in isolation, or the service user in isolation. Services now listen. They're not, they're not just up there and saying, we're going to do to you. We actually talk to service users and carers, find what they're looking for, see if we can you know, provide a service that is them. It's more person-centered, is what I'm trying to say, rather than s sticking around peg in a a square hole we're actually looking at per person-centered services and that's what triangle of care is all about listening to people and making sure that the triangle is complete